So I gave a little teaser as to a project that was coming up soon, and that was a discussion about things to use to print with. Um, we obviously know that there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of videos been done. When I was looking for information, I didn't really see one that gave me what I wanted to see. Um, so I thought it would be a, a good talking point and stick around. Let's discuss. I'm Ron and this is my place. We find a model, we make a model, we do whatever we need, we decide what we're gonna print, and now we slice it. We've all been there, we all do that, and then you have different options. You can put it in a SD, on an SD card, pop it in the printer, and then you can do what they call standalone printing. You can tether it where you take a, the USB cord, you plug it into the USB port on your computer, and then you can print from that. When you're printing from that on some sort of a um, Prusa Control or some other version of software, oh, excuse me, uh, the problem with that is that whatever software package you're using controls the printer. So if you print from an SD card from the printer, I'm doing this because my printers are over there. You just can't see them. <laughs> uh, it's, if it's in an SD card, it's all self-contained. If you don't lose power to the printer, it's gonna finish printing. If you run it from a computer, you're now relying on the computer to stay running as well as the printer to stay running. And so you're running tethered. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to do it and there's a lot of bad reasons to do it. Uh, Windows Update is one of the most favorite things that tend to kill prints because it'll suddenly do an update at night when everybody's asleep and guess what? You just killed your print. Um, and there's enough problems in printing that you want to try and avoid as many as you can. Uh, I've not ever really printed a lot with tethered because I'd had a couple issues early on. I use it when I need to if I'm playing around with something, but for most of my printing purposes, I choose to use the next option. That is some sort of a program, and there's a number of them out there, Octoprint, Repetier Server, um, Astroprint, there's, uh, there's a bunch of them that are out there. And it's basically a program running on some device that's dedicated to running your printers. In my case, I use Raspberry Pis. Um, different versions of them. This happens to be a Raspberry Pi 3 in a case with a built-in camera right there. Um, and this is the one that typically is on, that one It actually is on my Prusa Mark III quite often when I'm running Octoprint. The nice part about these devices is everything runs off of the SD card. So you could literally create an SD card, which is what I have, that has Octoprint on it, or you can have another SD card that's got Repetier Server. And it's literally as easy as power everything down, pop one card out, pop the other in, power it all back on, and now you're up and running on a whole different set setup. There's probably tons of ways out there you can multi-boot and do all this crazy fancy stuff, but this is just really simple for me. And it, and it works well, uh, and it lets me bounce back and forth and, and do my testing. So I started out with Octoprint. I like Octoprint. Uh, it's an open source thing. It's big community, very, very popular. I like it, and I like it a lot, and it's well supported, updated continually. But it seems, it's like it's bloated a little bit. Uh, when I say that, and I, it, it's got lots of features. It does neat stuff, tons of plugins you can get for it. Really easy to do that, which is cool. But it just seems to run slow for, on certain instances. It's really bizarre. I run it on a Raspberry Pi 3, and it seems to run just fine. But I also ran it on the CR10 on a Raspberry Pi 3 driving a 7-inch display. And for whatever reason, as it would it boot up and then you would have to run Octoprint, uh, basically Octoprint on a web, on your uh, web browser, it would be laggy it, to such a point that I actually would run an iPad next to it <laughs> because I couldn't use it. It was just horrible. Um, so that was kind of one of the things that triggered me to look for other solutions. The Raspberry Pi 
that goes into the on the control board of the Mark III is a W0, uh, and that's this guy. So it, it's a little little guy, and when you compare that to this, you can see the size difference. The whole thing, the Raspberry Pi 3 is about the size of this, uh, um, the case for the most part. So the Raspberry Pi Zero, now I, everything's falling over, it is little and it basically, you end up using these focus is killing me use the pin spots there and you can then plug this thing into uh, into the back of the board and you run it well it was having problems with octoprint so I never actually used it I went ahead and just used an external um, Raspberry Pi 3 and it worked fine. I've never seen a reason to, to bother pulling the board out. If I ever pull the board out, maybe I'll mess with it. Um, I just, right now, don't see a point. Um, but what I did do is I started messing with alternatives to Octoprint because Octoprint was running into some issues um, with Mark III, and I wanted to see what else was out there. So then I started looking and browsing around, and I came across Repetier Server. So Repetier is actually a paid software you there is a free version of it but there the to get all the bells and whistles to really make it useful and good it requires it to pay and i think it's 59 dollars um which in the big picture i didn't have a problem with it's stable it seems to work well it's just not nearly as updated and enhanced as octoprint is so why did i bother with it the short story is I run multiple printers and I didn't like the fact that Octoprint really only is designed to run one printer. Now I'm finding out, I saw in some comments that you can figure out and there's ways of loading multiple instances of Octoprint on a, say, a Raspberry Pi 3 and it can control multiple. I didn't want to deal with any of that. I may look into it and do some testing on it, but I saw that the Repetier server was natively able to support multiple printers. I thought it was cool, so I wanted to give it a shot. So that's what I did, and that's how come all of this is happening now. So what I wanted to talk about a little bit is not so much the in, the, the in depth of how to do any of this. I think that's done a bunch in other videos. I want to talk more about the differences between Octoprint and Repetier Server. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep it in that level uh, and not talk about all the hardware. Uh, if there's a lot of interest and you can't find other videos, let me know down below and maybe I'll do a quick video. But all of this is very simple and easy to set up. So what I'm going to do is actually talk about, we're going to switch and I'm going to show you through, walk you through Octoprint a little bit and then walk you through up to your server and kind of talk a little bit, compare and con contrast as, as you're going. Um, now keep in mind that the mindset that I've got is one, I'm geeky, two, I like trying different things, and I also run multiple printers. So the whole multi capability is really important to me. Um, I also run printers while I'm at work. So it's nice to pop into one IP address that I'm monitoring that I can then see my entire fleet of printers and how they're doing and then do emergency stops on ones if there's any print issues. Um, so anyways, that's the why. So let's get into, without any further ado, we'll take a look at, let's start with Octoprint. And Octoprint that we're gonna look at is actually running on this Raspberry Pi right here. And as you can see, there's no printer hooked up to it. So we're not gonna have a printer to, to look at, but it really isn't gonna change anything. Um, so, we're going to switch. So what you're looking at here is Octoprint. Octoprint runs on OctoPi, which is running on a Raspberry Pi. You can also run Octoprint on other things, but in this case, this is what we're talking about. Now, I haven't ran this one for a while. So as you can see, as soon as it booted up, all I did was power it up. It, it reached out and grabbed the same IP that's an internal IP, and it actually 
is telling me that there's some updates. There's updates to Octoprint itself. It's got a new release and then uh, some of the plugins, et cetera. Uh, there's a lot of good information. So for now, I'm going to ignore all these things and, and look at them later. Um, so this is the main screen that you pop into. And when you jump in, if you have it set up, I, I don't have it hooked to anything. I would hit connect right here and it would actually connect into the print, into the printer. And then some of the major features that at this point, this is what you're seeing, a web browser based thing. And you're going to see temperature. So you can actually see bar charts that go across here and allows you to control your temperature, your bed and your hot end, multiple hot ends. You'd have them there as well. Um, and then you can also go into control. And as you can see, this is the Raspberry Pi. So this is actually showing. Hi. The the camera. Now you have a view of the camera and this is also a live view so you can actually control if I was hooked into a printer I can control XYZ homing all that here as well as the extruder I can set how far I want it to extrude if I'm going to extrude if I'm going to retract the rate of flow which tool head turning motors and fans on and off you can fully control the camera remotely or the printer remotely and it's really awesome, actually. Um, so then the next thing that you're going to deal with is you can do G-Code Viewer. So if you actually have a, a let's see, I am going to yeah, well. I can actually load, uh, it's not going to let me load because it's not hooked up. So if we were hooked up, you would actually be able to control the G-code files here by either downloading them, deleting, loading, which is loading it into ready to go into the printer, or you can load and print. And when you do that, part of that is going to actually be slicing and you can, this is a full blown slicer. You can actually go up and down and see all your layer layers as you go through. Um, it works really nice. So then you can act at that point, step forward and backwards and, and uh, see what how it's going to print. Most people nowadays do that in, in their printer or in their slicer. Um, and then it also, of course, has a terminal server there. And then another bread and butter behind it is the time lapse. So as you can see, I've done a lot of prints on, on this uh, version. And that's since I deleted because every so often I come in and, and delete it. So this is all the different time lapses that I did. And then you can, it records them, it saves them. And in this case here, I've got uh, every 10 seconds, it's taking a picture and it's building a 25 frames per second um, video, if you will. So if I wanted to look at one, for instance, I could actually download, this was a print of the Maker's Muse um, torture egg, the download of the torture egg. And if I double click it, it'll actually show the picture of the torch. This is the, the time lapse. It was controlled through Octoprint of printing the torture thing from Angus, from Maker's, Maker's Muse. So anyways, that's how people create their, their time lapses. Um, and so that's all pretty cool. And that's for the most part, your bread and butter. Um, the other piece of it is you can go to settings. And one of my favorite features is you can go to a plugin manager here and you can put different plugins in. And if I wanted to get more, there's an entire repository that you can go to and actually scroll through. And there's just tons and tons of supported applications, if you will, plugins for Octoprint. Heavily, heavily, heavily supported. Um, so that part is really, really good and strong as can be. The, the community behind Octoprint is just amazing. Um, so anyway, so there's your, your good things. And one of the things I do like is 
I don't have a printer connected, but if you're running Marlin, uh, they have them for Repeteers as well, depending on what printer you have. You can actually use this as the as a uh, direct communication with your firmware and make a lot of changes without having to actually reflash your firmware, which is really, really cool. Um, so anyways, that's pretty much it. That it gives you all the bells and whistles that you need. And if you pull it up on any of uh, mobile devices, you get the same basic look. Um, what I am going to show is there's a mobile version. And I'm not sure how this is going to look, but you can actually go through and we're going to toggle the remote, the mobile, the mobile version of this as well. This is what it looks like if you're on a mobile device. So it makes it a lot easier to see and it, it makes it just prettier, if you will. And it's easier for mobile devices to show it all. And it's got all the same things. You've got temperature graphs and temperature controls. This is your controls for the printer itself. The webcam pictures, um, views of the uh, of the STL itself and command line uh, and of course more uh, set up for your webcam so let me get back to normal and that's pretty much the biggest things that you're gonna have here on Octoprint